Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to our Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to do some rustic primitive fall decor. It's going to be easy and with freebies that I got from, yes, you guessed it, my local transfer station or dump in parentheses. Uh, I found these really cool Lexan trays or plastic trays. So I thought they would be fun to upcycle into some fall decor. So I got out my DIY paint sample in the color. It's a green color and I can't think of the name of it, but I'll put it down at the bottom when I figure out what the color is. I have very little bit of paint in this little jar. It's less than half and it's a very tiny little jar but I'm gonna to try to get done what I need to get done. I basically want to focus on just the edges because I will be putting our decoupaging some napkin down in the middle of this little tray. So I did want to paint it a little bit and get rid of the design, but I mostly wanted to get the paint on just the edges and I did the ends as well, but the bottom I will paint probably spray paint black or a different color so that I have enough of this paint to work on the top. So I did one coat and I really should have sprayed this with something uh, to get rid of the slickness, but it actually stuck very well where I needed it to. So then I did a second coat once that was dry and I took my Waverly wax and sealed that in. It's clear wax. It's gonna make it a little bit darker are actually a lot darker if you see here in the video. But um, I wanted it to seal up so that I wouldn't lose a bunch of the paint. I know it's gonna come off and chip and that's okay, but I really wanted to keep as much of it on there as possible. So as it was drying, it's not totally dry here, but I wanted to try out this napkin on here and it actually, a whole half a napkin fits on this tray almost perfectly. So I'm going to cut the napkin in half and then I'm going to peel the backing off to bring it down to one layer. This is only a two layer napkin, so I'm going to bring it down to one layer. So here I'm peeling that off and then I'm going to take a little bit of water and I'm going to wet the edges so that I can kind of tear them and make them look a little bit more organic and like there's wear and tear on this tray because again, it's gonna be a primitive rustic piece. So I don't want it to have these sharp edges on the sides of them. So I'm just gonna dry fit the napkin on the bottom of the tray to make sure that everything is covered and it looks good and it looks like it does. So usually with decoupage, you want to typically paint the bottom or the underneath a lighter color so that your napkin or your paper will, all your details will show through really well. With this one, I want it to blend in and kind of be, uh, kind of light and dark. So I'm just gonna go ahead and not paint the bottom lighter color and leave it the green. And I'm gonna just Mod Podge this on. Now at the end, you're gonna see that I will have some lighter and darker colored paper and the bottom's just gonna look, uh, it's not gonna be all uniformed and that's great. That's how I wanted it. Uh, I like to play around with this. I know there are, certain rules that you have when you do things like this, but sometimes I like to break them and just kind of see what's gonna happen. And so I knew that this one would, because it's so bright already, that it would just soak in that green in certain spots. So I just went ahead and did all the Mod Podging and then took my, my, my paintbrush with my Mod Podge and just uh, laid it down flat and made sure all the edges were down. And I did get a lot of wrinkles on this, which again, that's fine. I don't mind wrinkles at all. I will at the end sand that down a little bit and kind of flatten it out. Those wrinkles will still be there and that's okay with me. This is a primitive piece. I want it to look old and not 
uh, like a perfect, perfect piece. So I have this other napkin with a beautiful sunflower on it and I thought it went really well with the other napkin. So I'm going to, again, use my water and go around the edges where I want it to tear and tear this out. Now this has some purple flowers on it, so I'm gonna go, go really close to the edges and get some of those purple flowers off there. I didn't want that color uh, on this piece because there is no purple on it, so I didn't want that to be in there. The um, This paper, I did want it to stand out a little bit and kind of not blend in so much. So I am painting with an ivory color. This is just Oops Paint from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. And I'm painting the back of the paper instead of painting the tray. It just makes it more specific where the paint's gonna go. And uh, it's a lot easier to, to figure it out. So I just put a little bit of Mod Podge on my paper. It's still drying, but I added a little bit more. And then I'm gonna add my beautiful bunch of sunflowers right in the middle of my tray. And I think it just matches perfectly, even though it's not the same napkin. Now, because I want this to have some age, aged look to it, and kind of a story, you know, just kind of, uh, it's been around a while. I'm gonna take some antique wax, this is Waverly, and I'm going to, right out of the bottle, just brush it on and then wipe it back on the edges of the tray. I'll go in on the paper a little bit. I'll work that in after I get the edges done. Here you can see, and I do a little swirling motion. I don't know, that's what I do. You don't have to, but that's how I do it. And you just want it a little darker on the outer edges, and then it slowly kind of fades into the middle. So I just take a, it's almost a dry brush, and go over and just give it some darker spots in the middle so it's not so bright white. So here I am sanding it down. You can see the edges have uh, distressed a little bit. And that's because the clay-based paint is activated by water. So because my wax wasn't dry, I wiped back that wax and it just pulled back some of that paint as well, which is fine with me. It gives it a little bit of um, more wear and tear and that yellow that comes through matches it really well. I'll do a final seal coat with this Rust-Oleum Matte Clear sealer and it will be done. This second plastic tray, we're gonna do a little something different, and I'm going to spray paint it black with some semi-gloss. Evidently, I bought the wrong spray paint, but I'm a flat paint girl, so I really wasn't too excited about this semi-gloss, but I do have flat sealer, so that will make it flat once I'm all done. So I sprayed it all front and back and gave it a good coat of black paint, now I'm going to take this crow that I got from 24 Hour Crafts. I love working with them on these little thin pieces of wood. I can cut out big thick pieces, but these are the thin ones and they're so easy to work with. So I gave it a good coat or maybe two, no, I think just one coat of the Waverly Black paint. That's all I really needed. It was covered really well. And I did both sides of the crow because I wasn't sure which way I was gonna have this go. So uh, I painted and dried it. And then I turned around and while that was drying, 
I grabbed some of my Waverly paint in the maze. This is a really beautiful yellow orange color. And I'm going to splatter the paint on my black tray. So I'm just taking my finger and splattering it that way. You get kind of smaller little dots as you do that. Um, you either should do this outside or make sure you have everything covered because I had paint go everywhere. So then I'm going to take some white paint or off-white paint and tap it on to my scissors there. And that gives you a little bit of a bigger paint dot when you're doing it and kind of little splatters here and there. I just wanted some texture and something different to look at on that piece. So once I got done and got it where I liked it, I uh, grabbed my little crow and sanded down the edges really good so that I could add some wax to it. I like adding the antique wax to my black paint and my distressed edges. It darkens up those edges, that's the raw wood, and then it deepens that black paint and it just gives it another uh, really cool look that I love. So I painted that all on and then I brushed it or wiped it back and it leaves it very, very primitive looking. So I have these canning jar lids and or rings, I should say, and I made a little sunflower and I'm going to make an even smaller sunflower with some material that I have kicking around. So I found this little ring in my stash. So I decided to make a little bit of a smaller sunflower and I'm cutting out a bottom piece for it with just some cardboard. I like to use the cardboard because it's flexible for the backing and I'll show you a little bit later on why I'm saying that. Here you can see the other sunflower. I did not video that part because I was gonna show you this little one but I used, uh, I'll, I'll make it exactly the same as I did the bigger one. So this one, I'm just making sure that the circle is a little bit bigger than my ring that I want or about the same size. And I'm just cutting it down so that it will fit nicely through the back of that hole. And I'll show you what I do that in a little bit. So first thing that I'm going to do is rip up a bunch of material that I can use for my petals. These little primitive sunflowers are really great for using up material that you have just kicking around, just little pieces and scraps. And for anything else that you have kicking around, as long as you have some kind of a circle, this is gonna work really well. Now I ripped off a bunch of this material that I had kicking around and I get, I think it's about, I think I measured it. It was about 15 inches long, but you could get away with 12 inches. That would be fine. Of course, it depends on the size of your sunflower. Mine's gonna be fairly small, and I'm also gonna trim it down. So all I'm gonna do is just take my pieces and tie them on to my, my little ring. Now this is gonna take, I think it took about 10 or 12 strips, and I, cut them down as I went. Now you don't have to do that. You could cut them the lengths that you need, but I just uh, tied them on just like you were going to tie a shoe, just a regular knot or just a regular tie. I didn't even knot it actually. And I went all the way around. Now you just want to put those on tight and just squish them up close together. You could also do, I think they call it a half hitch, which you take both of the ends and go through the loop that way. Uh, and that works fine too. I just do what's easier for my hands to do because I have arthritis. It just makes it easier for me to, to uh, do it this way, but either way is fine. And um, I went all the way around and again, you just want to push them together so they're nice and tight and you have a nice full sunflower. Trimming the edges to make them all about the same length. And then I went around and trimmed again if I saw any pieces that I might have missed or, you know, I just, just want to make it a little more uniformed. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, but um, I wanted to make it a little bit neater. So now I'm taking that piece of cardboard that I cut out and another scrap piece of material that I had. And I like these little stars, so I thought I would cut the material out 
uh, to fit it so that star would go right in the middle of my piece of cardboard. So I trimmed that up a little bit. I did leave the edges kind of long, or I gave it a little bit of a, a leeway there so that I could uh, wrap it around and glue it when I was ready. Now I left quite a bit there because I am gonna take some polyfill and I'm going to stick it on to my little circle. I glued it right on there. And then I'll take my material and put it on top and make sure that little star is right in the middle. So that's all I did, just took a little bit and then I go all the way around with my hot glue and seal those edges up so that that, that batting will stay in there. Now I picked which side of my sunflower that I wanted to be the front and I put it upside down so the front is on the bottom. And then I glue the top of my little star and I'm gonna glue it right into my sunflower. Now the reason why I like to use cardboard is because it's flexible. I wanted that little star to pop and to go through my little sunflower. If I used something stiffer, it wouldn't have worked as well and would have sat on the back instead of kind of popping out of the front. So that batting just makes it look really cool and makes that star pop. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of, I guess it's twine that I used here, and I'm gonna go around the edge of the sunflower just to give it a finished look. You don't have to do this, but I thought it would look pretty cool. I did it on the other one as well. And I am just gonna glue that all the way around. And then this is ready to use on my little tray. So I got all my pieces together here, my, my bigger sunflower, and I'm gonna glue that on first. So we're gonna glue it onto this tray. Now I forgot to spray it with my clear matte sealer so that it would look more matte, so it's still shiny here. But I do go back and give it a quick spray in the spots that you can see. It'll be covered up quite a bit, so there's only a few places where it's going to show but still, it makes me feel better to know that it's not a shiny paint. So then I am gluing on the little sunflower that I just made, showed you how I did that, and popping that in there where I want it. And then I took some, this is from a Pitberry garland that I had, and I save these sometimes because they're nice, thick, wired pieces, and they make great tree branches and here we're gonna use them as sunflower stems. So I cut a couple of them off so that we could use them for the stems. So just giving a little hot glue and then I'm gonna tuck it in underneath those petals so you can't see the tip and put it right down so it goes all the way to the bottom of the tray. Even though you're not gonna be able to see the bottom, that's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna head and go do the second stem for the other sunflower and do the same, put it right in underneath your sunflower petals and glue that down so that it will stay. And what's one of my primitive pieces without some Spanish moss? So I'm gonna take the uh, just a bunch of moss and glue it to the bottom to kind of make it look like grass, I guess. Um, and it also is where I'm gonna put my crow, so I kind of want him to pop against that black tray. So I want to give it a lighter color so when I put him down on there, he pops a little bit and you can see him. So I'm just doing the other side. We're gonna fill that up really nicely and get that glued. Watch out for your fingers because it gets hot. And then I'm going to add my little crow and I decided that he still wasn't popping enough, so I did add a little bit more up above his little back and his head just a little bit. Uh, and then I grabbed some of these pit berries. I have a little, little small garland of them, and I just wrapped them around his little body. So it just gave him a little more of a, a 
primitive pop and made him show up a little bit better because I don't want him to get lost in this piece because he's just so cute. So I glued that down on all three edges and then I had this little, again, little, little piece of material and I thought I think there's enough there so that I can make a bow and that worked out pretty well. And I stuck that down right by his feet on the edge of the tray. I grabbed my raffia and cut a couple of strips down and I'm working on unraveling it. I like to add this to my pieces sometimes just to give it another bit of depth to whatever I'm working on. So I unfolded them the best that I could and then ripped them down into strips and folded it in half. I'm gonna add these to my sunflowers so I wanted to make them look really good and almost kind of like corn stalks, you know, because I, I kind of think of sunflowers and corn together for some reason, maybe because they're tall and skinny and I don't know. But anyway, and fallish. So I just ripped them down into strips, doesn't really matter, you know, the size. And I twisted the top so that they would stay together a little bit better. And then I'm going to stick them up underneath kind of where I put their little stems. And I'm going to glue those up underneath. So it kind of comes down from the stem and covers up a little bit more of the black tray. And by this time, I have sprayed what you can see for the tray. I sprayed that in the mat. I don't know if you can tell, but I definitely can tell. Uh, and so that's all dry. I did that earlier. And then I just glued that down and trimmed it a little bit. So it kind of hangs down and just gives it a little bit more of a, a fall look, I think. So I'm going to take the other one and do the same thing up underneath the flower, uh, the sunflower. And then I'm going to take a little bit and put it down by the bow as well, just so it all looks cohesive and all looks like again at my local dump transfer station and I absolutely love it. So I wiped it up just a little bit and I grabbed one of my papers. I created this paper. It says Old Crooked River Seed Company and down at the bottom it says quality products since uh, 1883 maybe or something like that. I'm only going to use the top portion with the crows and the Old Crooked River Seed Company part. So I'm um, going to cut that down so that it will fit the front of my can. I don't want to completely cover my can because I love the rusty parts, but I do want to get this fit on there. You can find this paper on my Etsy shop. The link will be down in the description. It's uh, a print free print, not a free printable because I can't do that on Etsy, but it's a very inexpensive printable that you can buy and it works in photo frames and again on tin cans I just absolutely love it of course my crows I love my crows 
So I'm ripping it down to give it a more organic look onto my tin can. I don't want a rusty can with a nice straight edge. I got to have some, the label has to have some, you know, ripping and tearing and it just has got to look like it's been around and beat up just like the can has been. So there we go. We got that fit on there and it looks really good. So now I'm going to take my uh, Mod Podge and put that on the can. Now, as you can see the old label, you can see some of the pieces from the old one and I didn't even bother trying to get that off. I wanted to uh, just cover it up because I knew that this piece would because it's a nice big piece. So I'm taking the Mod Podge and putting it on the back of my paper just because it's thicker and it's easier to do with a paper like this. You could add it to the can if you wanted to, but uh, it just worked really well putting it on the paper and then I could lay it down and it would be stuck where I wanted it. So I put it on and then I think, I, I didn't even notice as I was doing it, but I think it's a little bit crooked. I guess it could be just because of the way I ripped it maybe, or because it says crooked on it, <laughs> I don't know. But I really love how this looks on this can. And because of the ripples on the side of the can, I played with that a little bit on the label. I took, um, I just took my finger and went across those little ripples and made it so that the label was stuck right in there too. I thought that looked really good. Now this is just regular copy paper. I got, just I printed this right off my printer and it was an oops one because I got paint on it, I think. And so I just threw it aside and said, I'll use it on something. As soon as I found this can in the metal bin, I was like, oh boy, I know exactly what I'm going to put on this. Um, and so I added, because when you rip the paper, you get some of the white from the copy paper coming through. I added some antique wax along the edges. Of course, then it it brings it so that it looks like it's supposed to be on the can. It gives it that rusty look right along with everything else. So I put it on the edges and then I, in my little swirl motion that I use, and then I'm just taking my rag and just kind of tamping and wiping it back. I do a little bit of, um, kind of swiping it into the middle of the can as well as I do it. So that worked out really well too, because it gives it that faded look where it kind of looks like it's fading into the, into the middle of the label. Now I thought I'd accentuate some of these little ribs in the can that I got through the label. So I'm just gonna go with my antique wax. It's just whatever was on the brush. I didn't get really, uh, thick with it and I'm just brushing that on there and as you can see there you can see them coming through it looks so cool so I want to seal this in I just took a little bit of um, Mod Podge and I'm going to seal that in and then I'm going to once that's dry I'm going to take some of my Spanish moss and glue that to the inside edge of my can so that it kind of sticks out a little bit. I'm gonna add some flowers to this, but I like the look of Spanish moss with my flowers. And I, if I do it this way, I'll be able to change out my flowers whenever I want to or add whatever I want in there. So I like doing this with my, my can so that you can just see the moss. It just adds a nice touch to whatever you use it for. I took a trip to Dollar Tree and they have these beautiful sunflowers. These are gorgeous. And they also have the yellow. So I bought two of each and then some little daisy looking guys and some uh, sprigs of pumpkin, little pumpkins with greenery and all different kinds of things. So you'll have to check them out because they really have some great stuff for their florals. And so I just pulled the, the tags off and popped those in and this is how it looks.
Oh my gosh, I hope you guys love these projects today. I love fall. These are my colors. I love the earth tones. And my friend Tracy pointed that out to me. She said, you love the earth tones, don't you? I'm like, yes, I love the fall colors. They're beautiful, they're warm, and they accentuate my style really well. Leave me a comment below and let me know which one of these was your favorite. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And have a great day.